So first I want to uh, solve together those uh, two. You remember I, I gave you some canonical transformations. OK. So uh, uh, did, did you try to, to So this is a transformation from little p, little q, to big P, uh, big Q, and big so cotangent of P. Did you or did you not try? Anybody try? You did? You succeed or? Yes? Do you want to do that or? OK, I'll do it because otherwise. Uh, so I, as I said, the, uh, you, you have a, well several ways to, to check whether this is a canonical transformation. And uh, one way is, by definition, a canonical transformation is a transformation that leaves the Hamilton equations uh, uh, unchanged in form. Okay, so that means that uh, I. Sh uh, so this is one way. So let's try this one. So the question is, is it? It canonical. So one thing you can try is to write Hamilton equations, right, and, uh, 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 and then check if uh, you can have a, a you know fr from big H to big K, that is the transform Hamiltonian under this canonical transformation, whether uh, uh, they are preserved in form. So how do you do that? Well, I, I write, for, for instance, uh, let, let me try. Uh, uh, I write uh, uh, a Hamilton equation for little p, so p dot minus p dot. This should be right d h uh, d q. Okay. So. This, uh, this, on the other hand, uh, so th there is no time dependence here. So uh, H should be also be capital K, right? But K depends on big Q and big P rather than little p and, and little q. So that means I, I can write this, uh, 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 this uh, partial derivative with respect to Q, like uh, dK, say, with respect to big Q, dQ little q, OK, plus the dependence maybe of uh, big K, D, big P, DP, DQ, OK? So that in general. But uh, uh, through, through this transformation, I know what the, the, you know, I, I know what the partial derivative of big Q with respect to Q, and also the partial derivative of big P with respect to little q, just by inspection, right? Uh, you see that, right? This, w w what is this? I have to take the partial derivative uh, of this. So uh, I have 1 over q, right? So it's what? Minus 1 over q square sine of p. But then I have the log. So everything is divided by, by 1 over q sine of p. And, and of course, this is also known as minus 1 over q, because uh, and this is even simpler, because the, the partial derivative of big P with respect to q is, is, is just the cotangent of little p, OK? So in other words, uh, 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 this uh, quantity is minus 1 over q, this term here partial capital K uh, uh, with respect to big Q. And then I have a plus this cotangent of P, uh, the derivative of big K with respect to big, 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 uh, big P, OK? <coughs> on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, uh, I can also write this uh, quantity. 
So now I can simplify there. Uh, on the other hand, uh, little p dot, little p dot, right, is also, because p is a function of big Q and big P, right, because of the transformation, I can also write this as uh, what? Partial p, right, with respect to uh, big Q, Q dot, plus partial p, big P, uh, P dot, right? This is always true. Uh, if you have a, a function of this uh, big Q and big P, if you take the dot, you can write that. I mean, we have done that several times. Again, I can use my canonical transformations to write what is, uh, uh, what, what is this, this uh, 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 here, right? And you see that this quantity is just uh, uh, minus the cotangent of P, right? And this is minus 1 over Q. So you see that now I can compare these two. I can compare this line with this line here, and I have these coefficients. And this, they must be equal, right? Because I started from the same quantity. And so you see that uh, I can see what uh, these derivatives must be equal to, because for these two to be equal, that means that the partial derivative of big K with respect to Q, right, must be equal. Well, there is a minus here, so I guess must be equal to big P. And uh, the partial derivative of k with respect to big P must be equal, uh, did I? Uh, yeah. No, uh, so th th there is no minus here, I think. Right? Ah, because it, there was an overall minus here, yes. So it's minus this thing here. OK. But then you see that for this to be true, uh, it must be that these two are equal, because I started from the same quantity. Indeed, I have to satisfy my Hamilton equation in form for big K with respect to uh, big Q and big P. So this is, uh, this is one way. It's not. As you see, it's a maybe it's a, it's easier usually to check that uh, the the Poisson brackets. Uh, that's what we are going to do in, with the next example. It's usually simpler to check that the, the Poisson brackets are satisfied because remember that uh, uh, they are preserved by canonical transformation transformations and vice versa. So uh, if you can prove that the canon the, the Poisson brackets of these two. Uh, are true f for the canonical uh, variables, then you have proved that this is a canonical transformation. Uh, one question you may have is, uh, what is the, the gen generating function for this transformation? And uh, of course, this is a bit, uh, it is a bit uh, tricky to, to prove. Uh, So in general, uh, well, in general, uh, it's complicated. But we, we are going to see uh, uh, this Hamilton-Jacobi in, in a second. That is a, a systematic way to find the generating function. Okay. Also, uh, how did I get? How, how did I? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, part of the exercise, and. Uh, uh, well, you, you, you have to find the, you see, this is little p with respect to big Q and big P. So you have to mix these up, right, until you find something uh, that you, uh, you see there. So how, how do you do that, in fact? Uh, you see, uh, big P, right, is little Q, the cotangent of P, right? So it's the cosine P over the sine of p, right, this, because this is uh, the cotangent. But then you see that uh, you can use this. 
because this tells you that the sine of p, the sine of p is little q e to the big Q, right? So uh, <coughs> this means that uh, this is cosine of p, then the is one, right, q, so uh, pa, 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 e minus big Q. So in other words, the cosine of little p is equal to this. Hmm? And uh, from the other one, from the other one, you see that the one over little q, obviously, is e q, uh, e uh, q uh, divided by uh, the the sine, sine p. Okay, so from here you can. Uh, or, or if you want, sine of p, q e to the q. That it, it was uh, from from there. Okay. So EQ sign, right? Now, if you take uh, uh, <coughs> P. so now take for instance, uh, uh, take uh, uh, the partial derivative here with respect to uh, uh, with respect to big P. Huh? So on both sides. So you see, if I take the, the partial derivative here, what is it? It's minus sine of p d little p big p, right? Hmm? And, and obviously, this is just uh, e to the q if you, if you do the same here, right? On the other hand, e to the q, e to the q is uh, sine of uh, uh, p, sine of p divided by q. Hmm? So you see that uh, from here, right, you have that, uh, this result here, okay? And if you, uh, so, uh, okay, if you do this something, uh, yeah. Big Q is not function. Uh, big Q? Is not function. Uh, it's not what? Small. Big Q. Is not uh, function small. Big Q is a function of little p and big P. No, but I mean, uh, it's not a function of big P. Remember, q, little Q's and P's are considered independent variables in the Hamiltonian approach. <coughs> hmm? Same story if you do the other. So here I took the derivative with respect to uh, uh, big, big P but I can take the derivative with respect to, to big Q, right, from here. So take the derivative uh, with respect to big uh, sine P. Uh, no, he, uh, let's see, cosine, yeah, still here. So it's minus sine of P d uh, the little p, so you need little q. Right, and this is the cosine of p, right? So then you see that this, you take it on the other side, and you get uh, this, okay? 
Okay, so this is the. Uh, so this just to justify uh, what I wrote here. Uh, at the point was to to show that uh, you preserve these equations. Okay, so you see, I mean, is uh, to to get this uh, crossed derivative, you have to mix the, the your uh, you have to mix your uh, uh, canonical transformation in such a way that uh, you can, uh, by inspection, derive this result. Um, about the other exercise. Uh, is this clear? Or? It's not clear. I heard some, yeah. So w what is not clear? Well, I, 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 I need to, to find out what uh, this partial derivative is and, and what this is. And I have this. Uh, 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 so I know, uh, so I, I just rewrite these. For, for instance, you see here I rewrote this one until I get an expression that is what I want. That uh, you see from here it's easy to, to get uh, the, the expression of this partial derivative. So you, you go around until you find something that uh, it gives you what, what is the problem. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, to, to find out what this is, you, you have to uh, you have to write this uh, in a, in a way that uh, it's easy to take this partial derivative. So that's what I'd, I've done here. So then you have an explicit. Uh, you see, from here, just by, by inspection, I found what this partial. Derivative. Then I write the result. Then I compare these two, and by comparing these two, I see that uh, this. Uh, transform Hamiltonian that I call BK must satisfy Hamilton equations. When, when, so then I have proved that uh, this is a canonical transformation. But as I said, uh, let, let's move to the, the other problem. Uh, uh, so this was problem number one. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, how do you find the, the transfer? How, how do I find the generating function? What, what is not clear? Yes, but but here you didn't need the the, the generating function. Here I'm just pr ch checking. You already have the, the transformation, so you only want to check that this is canonical, that indeed this is a canonical transformation. With the generating function, helps you to find the, the canonical transformation, right? But here I already give you the canonical transformation, so you don't have to worry. Of course, as I said, you may, you may wonder what is the the, the, the generating function generating this particular canonical transformation. But that's, uh, okay, uh, let's. Yeah, but I said the, the, the canonical transformation here is time independent. So if you don't have an explicit time dependence, then big H uh, is equal to big K formally. How about the other, this uh, number 15, right? Uh, uh, so here it was a little different. You had, <coughs> sorry, you had a, a canonical transformation defined like a big uh, capital Q little q to some power alpha, the cosine of beta p, big P, q alpha sine of beta p, right? And uh, again, uh, the question was whether this is a, a canonical transformation. So of course, you can proceed as I just did for the previous exercise. But uh, maybe it's easier, in fact, 
to use the other property that. Uh, uh, We are talking still of the previous problem. Well, now I raise it, so it's sort of irreversible. So let me see what. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Right. Yes. So. To find whether that is. No. What you want to know? Why the partial of little p with respect to big P is minus 1q? Yes. That's uh, what uh, it was there. Yes. Then you compare and uh, you find. Uh, so now to the next problem. This one. Is this canonical? Okay, if it is canonical, the Poisson bracket, uh, uh, so the, the fundamental Poisson bracket must be preserved. So certainly you have a Poisson bracket of Q with Q with itself and P with itself that, that uh, by construction uh, is going to be preserved, but uh, uh, you have to verify that uh, this Poisson bracket uh, uh, must give you one, right? This is the crucial one uh, that shows uh, uh, that these two are canonical uh, variables, OK? A and uh, uh, remember that uh, the Poisson bracket is the partial derivative of, uh, of this with respect to uh, Q, uh, the, the partial derivative of this P minus the vice versa, why right? you, you go through. Uh, and you see, so, so le if we take the derivative with respect to uh, uh, little q, you have uh, 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 no, alpha, uh, q alpha minus 1, right? Then the cosine of beta P, this must be multiplied by uh, the... Uh, 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 Q alpha beta uh, cosine beta P. Hmm? Minus the uh, Plus, so you have minus the, uh, uh, so you, you go around the other way. So Q alpha beta sine uh, beta P times alpha, again, Q alpha minus 1, uh, that uh, sine beta P, right? Uh, so you see that... Uh, you have uh, a, a, the cos square of whatever plus sine square of of, uh, of of beta p, so that is one. So the sum of these two and, and these two are the same, right? With also the beta, so you get alpha beta q two alpha minus one, okay? Did you get this? And uh, as I said, this should, should give you one for, for big Q and P to be canonical. So you see that indeed this is a canonical transformation, but not for arbitrary values of alpha and beta, but only, only if alpha, so you want this to be equal to one, so this should be uh, zero, right, the, the exponent, so alpha, 
should be one half, and at the same time, alpha beta should be uh, uh, one. So that means uh, since alpha is one half, beta must be two. Okay. So. Uh, so here I should write. Uh, If I do that, then uh, I have uh, my um, uh, fundamental Poisson brackets uh, satisfy, and this is a canonical transformation. So in this case, at least, this is a much uh, more straightforward way to, to prove uh, that is a canonical transformation. Again, can I find? Can I find the generating function? Uh, again, uh, to, to find the generating function, I should mix these variables in such a way uh, for instance, take the ratio between these two, right? Big P, big P over big Q, right? So I get rid of this, is the tangent of 2P. <coughs> OK. On the other hand, if I take Q squared plus P squared, right? You see that, again, I have this structure that these two sum uh, to 1. This is equal to Q. <coughs> Therefore, big P is big Q, the tangent of 2P. And little Q is big Q squared. So you can use this in here. That means it's 1 plus the tangent squared of 2p, right? OK. Now, what, what kind of generating function is in the form f3? I'm looking for a generating function of the type 3 that uh, I, uh, I remind you is uh, the one that depends on little p and big Q. And the equations. Uh, the equations for this uh, uh, is that little q, so it's a function of big p, uh, little p, a big q, so you get that little q is the minus df3, uh, the partial of little p, okay? And uh, <coughs> this we don't need any longer. And uh, so I, I, I need to know what the big P is, uh, and this is minus df3, the q. OK, these are the, the formulas that you, you, you find in your textbook. So you see that uh, I have little q that is this, big P that is this. A and this must be equal to minus df3, so the first one, dq, minus df3. So if I integrate this, I get my f3, right? Because you see that uh, uh, so I want a function. The partial derivative with respect to little p gives me this. And the partial derivative with respect to bq gives me this. So f3, you see, with respect to big Q, so you see if I take 1 half Q square tangent of 2P, this is satisfied. And actually also the other one is satisfied. So this is the generative function. OK, it looks like I pulled it out from, uh, <laughs> from a hat, like, like the, 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 the white rabbit. 
but actually this is the way you, you, you can find the, the generating function. You mix the, your variables uh, until you have an e easy expression or a simple enough expression for, for your uh, unknown uh, two variables in the transformation uh, function and then those are, are going to be equal to some derivative so then you integrate and you find your generating function. But I mean, you, you'll never be required to find that. I mean, it's just a, out of curiosity how to do it. Okay, so these two were the exercises that uh, you were, I'm sure you, you tried to uh, solve. And since we, uh, ah, yes. There is one last thing that uh, I didn't say uh, last time. So uh, this is more like, uh, well, it's a nice, uh, uh, so is this OK? Uh, you have questions? Yeah. You. No, they are not. They can depend on these uh, f four possible sets of two variables, right? So, no, you you know that they must the generating functions must depend must depend on on two of these canonical sets, right? So since you have uh, four of them. Uh, you have these possibilities, right? So you have actually four different uh, uh, generating functions, depending on the, the canonical transformation that you are generating. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's a fact of life that uh, you don't have only one kind. You want to have a, yeah, you, you can also have a generative function of the other kind. Yeah. I, I just decide to use this one. So then uh, I, I go about looking for these equations and to solve it. No, it's called an F3 if, if, if the, you remember I listed them. So, the F3 is the one that depends on little p and big Q. If it depends on big P and little Q, that is the F2, I think. Yes. Ah, yeah, that's yes. Yeah, if, the, if it depends, this is the convention. If it depends on these two, then this is called F3. Ah. Ah, yeah, it's universal. I mean, it's a convention, so. I mean, people agree on this because you f you found in the book that it was different. But I mean, it's just a name. You no, know? a name is a name is a name. I mean, if you decide to call this uh, S or G or something, that's okay, as long uh, as as we agree that uh, when you say G, you mean you mean F three. Okay. Uh, So let me <coughs> say these last things about uh, this canonical transformation. Uh, remember that uh, uh, we wrote the Hamilton. You're still un un unhappy. OK, uh, you are happy. So good. Uh, so uh, 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 if you write the, the Poisson brackets of your canonical variables, right? These, these are the, uh, they give you the, the Hamilton equations, right? Meaning that if you take the Poisson bracket at the canonical variable, this is dH dPi, and this is dH d uh, minus dQi, and this is P dot I, and this is uh, Q dot I. So this is nice because it's symmetric, you see? You don't have to worry about these minus signs. Uh, uh, is the Q, the Poisson bracket of QIH, 
gives you the dot of Q and the same for, for the P. OK, so this is one less thing, thing that you must remember if you write them. The, so these are the Hamilton, Hamilton <coughs> equations, right? Now, uh, 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 if you, uh, this way you can see that uh, there is a, 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 if you want, the, the Hamiltonian itself is the generating function of a, very, of, of a special, uh, uh, of a special uh, uh, canonical transformation. Because uh, uh, you see here that uh, uh, take, uh, now, uh, OK, I'm sorry, the F2, that is the one that depends on little q and big P, so just the opposite of uh, uh, take uh, this special case of F2 that uh, you remember uh, the F2 is the one that contains the identity, that is the QI big PI, right? You remember that we check that, in fact, this, this generative function generates, generates the identity, meaning that uh, little q goes in big Q uh, and uh, little p goes into. But uh, I, I just add an infinitesimal quantity, and I put the Hamiltonian here, OK? The Hamiltonian. So a small, a small, so this is the Hamiltonian, and this is a small quantity that I take to be a, a small interval of time, so a small dt. So I'm, I'm generating, uh, I take a, a generating function of this particular form, identity, the generating function of the identity transformation, plus dt, the Hamiltonian. And df2. Uh, dqi is equal to pi, right? But uh, you see that uh, if I, if I, so this is the definition. And in this case, by taking f2 in this form, uh, this is what? Well, of course, it's like the identity from this part plus this infinitesimal change uh, that I call epsilon dh dqi, where epsilon is this uh, small in interval of time. <coughs> so from this one, uh, I get that the change, uh, uh, so the difference between the new uh, momenta and the old momenta that I can call dpi, right, is exactly uh, minus epsilon dh. Uh, so I take it on the other side, dh uh, uh, dqi. And uh, similarly, uh, if you remember, df2 with respect to uh, big, uh, 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 big P, right? Uh, this is big QI, right, by definition of this generating function. And again, I can take, uh, so this obviously has the identity part of the transformation plus this epsilon dh d big p i uh, d d d p i so in this case the change from the new set of variables and the old ones that you can call d q i the change uh, is uh, uh, epsilon d h d p i So this, we said, is dt dh dqi, right? And uh, what is dh dqi? Two times minus the other. Yeah. So you see that uh, this becomes p dot i dt. So this becomes dpi. So what, 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 what is d, dpi? This is the change, delta pi is the change in, in this uh, canonical momenta due to the transformation. But here I, I just proved that this change is exactly the differential of pi, that is by how much p of i, p 
P, pi has changed because of the evolution of the system. So from this point, to, and the same you, you get for the Qs. So under this generating function, you can see that uh, that function, F2 in this case, or better, is the identity plus the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian is generating a canonical transformation that is exactly the trajectory in phase space of your system. So the Hamiltonian is that special generating function that generates a canonical transformation that takes you from time, say, t t1 to times t2 in phase space. So it's generating the motion of the system. So that's quite, quite a, a, a result. And uh, you, uh, you uh, well, I, 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 I'm not going to do it, but uh, you, you, you may guess that, uh, so you see it has to do with time, right? Like uh, for the Lagrangian that we proved that uh, if you have a symmetry in time, then the Hamiltonian is conserved. Here you have uh, even stronger that uh, the Hamiltonian is generating the motion of the system in a way through a spe very, spe very special canonical transformation that is the transformation that brings you from the initial conditions to the, the position in phase space of your body, of your system. Similarly, if you look at uh, 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 a, a if you put here p i, you are generating a, a translation of your system. So this is the, 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 this very special generating function with this choice is the one that generates a, trans, a, a translation in your system, meaning that uh, 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 p remains the same, but delta q is a translation. It translates by a finite amount. And finally, if you put here the angular momentum, the angular momentum, then you are generating a canonical transformation that is nothing but a, a rotation. So from the point of view of the generating functions, there is a subclass of, of these, uh, among all the possible canonical transformations, you can identify those canonical transformations that are familiar to you under different names, that was the motion of the system, a rotation and a translation. So you see it's a very unifying point of view through the generating of canonical transformation. Well, here you, you even have the solution of your motion, right? Because this is, is generating the motion of the system in phase space, OK? So what, I, what, what this means is that uh, the, the, your system is moving in, 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 in this phase space that is difficult to, to draw because it has many axes, okay? Your system is one point in this two n dimensional phase space, right? Because you have coordinates and momenta. And as the system evolves, it moves from here to, to here, I don't know, two points in phase space. And that motion can be seen as a canonical transformation. So we, we look at canonical transformation as a trick to, to solve your system of equations. But you can also look at the motion of your system as a canonical transformation. And from that point of view, your Hamiltonian is generating this very particular canonical transformation that you call the motion of your system. So you see, it's in a way, within the Hamiltonian approach, it's a better way to look at at the motion of the system as a particular canonical transformation. And then the solution is to l find this generating function. OK? And that brings us to the last approach, that is the Hamilton-Jacobi. To which I move, unless you, you want to ask me something. So from this point of view, what uh, the, the solution of, uh, of, of, uh, of the problem, of the mechanical problem, uh, can be seen as a canonical transformation generated by some special generating function. And here you can, uh, so let's start from the, the, 
the first uh, so let's first start from the the, the general Ham Hamilton Jacobi point of view and then we will rediscover what we said uh, last week that uh, 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 a possibility, so, so but let me start from the general. So uh, we say one way to solve, no hurry. <laughs> okay. So let me. <coughs> uh, you, you also. You should keep that. Uh, so we, we look for a it is well hidden, I see. <laughs> okay, just listen to me. Otherwise we So now I, I uh, so we we sort of agree that uh, uh, we, we go about solving the, the dynamical problem, looking for cap special canonical transformation. So let me step back uh, uh, for a second, and uh, 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 you understand that uh, the best canonical transformation, you see here the canonical transformation is generating the motion. So if I can find a canonical transformation that uh, brings me, brings all coordinates and momenta to the initial conditions, initial coordinates, initial momenta, uh, those are constant, and then I have found a, a solution of the problem, right? So this is the first uh, line of approach. So instead of solving Hamilton equations, I look for the generating functions that take the system at time t and brings it back to the initial conditions, okay? And this is obviously is the solution of motion, right? Because then you have the trajectory in phase space for an arbitrary time t back to the initial conditions. So it's exactly what I just said here, that uh, the motion of the system is a particular uh, canonical transformation. And now I want to find, uh, find the generating function of this that brings me back to the initial condition. So what equation this generating function uh, should uh, uh, satisfy? You see, if I go back to the initial conditions, by definition, these are uh, 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 coordinates and momenta time independent, right? Because these are initial conditions. So you pick them. You say start from here or start from there with a given momenta. And those are constant. You fix them. So by definition, you have uh, that uh, the new variables of this canonical transformation that takes you from arbitrary time t back to the initial conditions must bring you to new variables, big Q and big P, that by definition are time independent, because that is what the initial condition is. The initial condition does not depend on the time, right? It's time independent. It's just uh, whatever number you fix it. And therefore, you have that big K must be equal to zero, right, to satisfy that. If you take the new Hamiltonian to be identically, identically equal to zero, automatically you have that your Hamilton equations uh, are uh, satisfied, okay? So uh, this is uh, uh, rather formal, but you see that, uh, remember that K is equal to the Hamiltonian plus uh, uh, if you, if you uh, plus the generating function explicit dependence on time, right? Uh, I have to decide which f uh, I put there, but uh, 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 I'll do it in a second. And if this is equal to zero, this must vanish. So in a way, this is the equation that uh, my generating function must satisfy in order to have these new Hamilton equations. That, but the construction is what I want. So if I want to find a canonical transformation generated by a function f uh, uh, that brings back the system to the initial conditions, I must satisfy this equation here. 
okay? Let's take uh, F2 as, uh, uh, as uh, this function, uh, okay? F2 is the one that depends on little q and, and big P, right? This is the F, uh, F2. <coughs> it's just convenient to take this, as you will see in a second. And uh, remember that uh, F2, uh, that depends on uh, little q and big P, has that the little pi is exactly the F2, the uh, qi, okay? So this equation here, I can write it uh, a little more explicitly, means that uh, my Hamiltonian, that is a function of little q and little p, where little p is, however, a partial derivative of this uh, F2 dqi, and maybe time, plus df2 dt must be equal to zero. So my generating function that I, I uh, F2 must satisfy this differential equation. So if you solve this differential, so this is the Hamiltonian. You, you, uh, uh, in a second, we will uh, apply this to the harmonical oscillator. So here you put the, your Hamiltonian, but uh, 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 for the qi, then for the momenta, you put uh, uh, this uh, partial derivatives, okay? And you have the time dependence. Then uh, you solve this equation. By solving this equation, you, you find your generating function. So this is a systematic way to find the generating function of a special canonical transformation. That is the can canonical transformation that brings you back to the initial condition. So these are going to be the, your Hamiltonian. Hamilton equations, okay, after you have done this transformation. And obviously, if these are the Hamilton equations, you know how to solve them because, I mean, this is even simpler than the one we, uh, we had uh, uh, last week, okay? Of course, uh, uh, as we already said several times, there is a sort of, uh, uh, so these are the Hamilton Jacobi equation is just one equation. You see, it's just one equation. So you say, great, I've, I've, uh, <coughs> I've, uh, I've uh, so uh, in the Lagrangian, I had uh, n second order differential equations. Then I moved to the Hamiltonian. I have two times n first order differential equations. But here I only have one differential equation. So you may think uh, you have gained something, but of course you didn't because there is a conservation of uh, whatever uh, difficulty in the problem uh, you have, because this is true that it's a single, it's, it's just one equation, but it's, you see it's a, it's a one equation, but at the partial, you see it's a first order differential equation. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a, uh, it's a, a, a how, how they are called, a partial differential equation uh, in n plus one variables, right? So it's a, mo it's, a, it's a much more complicated object in general to solve. In fact, there are no systematic ways to solve this equation. Okay, so uh, it, it's true that it's only one, but it, it's in n plus one variables with the partial derivative. So it's uh, very often. And as I said uh, the other time, essentially you know how to solve these partial, these uh, differential equations uh, if you have some sort of factorization in such a way that you can uh, boil down this equation to uh, ordinary uh, differential, uh, 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 differential equation. Usually, uh, 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 this F2 is called S in uh, so in the textbooks, you will see usually the Hamilton-Jacobi equation written in terms of this uh, S. Uh, uh, and this S, uh, that is the F2, is called Hamilton um, uh, principal. So Hamilton's principal function. Just in case you 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 you, you go and read a, a book on this.
Um, maybe you uh, recall that we call S the action, some uh, that is the integral of the Lagrangian with respect to, to the time, right? I, I call it the action. And actually, it, now this is not coincidence. I mean, this S that is the principal function indeed uh, uh, is related to the action because say, uh, uh, take the total derivative of S with respect to T, right? So S is a function. Uh, so this is a S is a function of uh, uh, QI of the coordinate, so uh, uh, is is going to be uh, dQI Q dot I plus dS dT, right? And, 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 but dS dQI, these are the P, the PI. So I have PI Q dot I, right? And uh, you see, ds uh, is nothing but minus h from Hamilton Jacobi. So this is really minus h. OK? And uh, uh, you remember that uh, p times q dot i minus h is what we call the Lagrangian, right? So you see that uh, uh, s, that is indeed the action plus some, uh, some constant value. Uh, so this is the action that enter uh, Hamilton's uh, variational principle. So, uh, so indeed, you can use the same symbol because there is uh, no confusion. They are the same uh, things. They are the same function. Okay. So maybe let's let's. Uh, uh, so this is a maybe a, a little formal. So let's uh, uh, write uh, uh, this Hamilton Jacobi equation for a, a familiar example. Uh, what can be more familiar than the harmonical oscillator? So let's do that. So that's the equation. So what is the Hamiltonian for the harmonical oscillator? That we wrote last week. So let me remind you that that can be written in this form, right? And since there is no, so p square, m square, omega square, q square, and since there is no explicit time uh, dependence, uh, the Hamiltonian uh, uh, is the energy and uh, it, 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 it is a, a, a conserved quantity, OK? And this omega is the usual uh, uh, k over m, where k is the pro the the proportion the the constant in front of the of the force. Okay. So how do you write the ha Hamilton uh, Jacobi equation in this case? Uh, well, you just take the Hamiltonian uh, where you have q. You just uh, well uh, you just leave q, and uh, it, the only point is that uh, w whenever you have p, you replace p by the partial derivative of your action with respect to q, right? Because it's, this is the, and then uh, you had uh, this uh, partial derivative. So uh, the Hamilton-Jacobi equation for the harmonical oscillator is, is just uh, 1 over 2m ds dp square, because this is p plus the, 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 the q square plus ds dt, and this must be vanish. So now I've written my Hamilton-Jacobi equation for the harmonical oscillator, OK? And I should try and solve it. So let's do that. <coughs> so, uh, 
So this action, this uh, uh, Hamilton principal function, uh, uh, remember, it depends on your coordinates, right? And, and time at P, okay? Uh, but uh, you see, so it should depend on T. But uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, there is no, uh, the Hamiltonian does not depend explicitly on T. So what I want to say, so first I should say, you see, there is no, uh, I mean, there is no, uh, uh, like uh, for ordinary differential equation with, uh, for an ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients, you know a systematic way, yeah. What? D S. Ah yes, you're right. So uh, uh, there is no uh, recipe that you can apply and find the solution. You 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 must look and 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 try the solution. Uh, I mean, each uh, that means that for each uh, case uh, you have to, but. There are some uh, general rules, and essentially, you see, th this is a, an equation uh, in which here you have the partial derivative with respect to Q, and here with respect to T. But you see, the Hamiltonian, we said, is a constant. It does not depend explicitly on time. That means this part, for this part to, to, to be equal to this, both must be a constant, right? Because there is no way, otherwise, this, this can cancel this. That means that this part must be equal to some constant, and this minus that constant. And then, if this is true, you satisfy the, your equation. So that means that uh, this general uh, function, uh, uh, this uh, that I call the Hamilton principal function, must factorize in a part that depends on Q, right? Minus this alpha that is the constant here explicit depend on t, right, because, because the partial derivative of s with respect to t should be equal to a constant, so you have this. This is general. This is not a, a peculiar, it's not peculiar to the harmonical oscillator. Essentially, you can solve these equations only if it splits in pieces, each of which depends on only one variable. Okay, because you understand that if this is true, this goes back to an ordinary differential equation that you know how to solve. This is called factorization in general. This is a very simple case because uh, 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 you have a factorization in the dependence uh, uh, on one side on the, your coordinates and the time on the other on the other case. So this is very general because it's very often you have this fact that the Hamiltonian. Uh, uh, does not depend explicitly on time uh, because uh, the energy is conserved. And so if this was a Hamilton principal uh, function, this is Hamilton characteristic function. Okay? Well, just... Uh, just uh, and then uh, you see that uh, if this is the case, that your action can be split or your Hamilton principal function can be split in the characteristic function plus this part that, uh, in a way, you have already solved, you see that uh, the equation, the equation becomes a much, small, much simpler one, that is this one. <coughs> right? equal to alpha, what I call alpha. Obviously, this alpha is nothing uh, but the energy, right? And then you see S now is, uh, 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 I should put omega, really, sorry. And, and omega now, you see, is a function of Q. So this becomes a, a, a total derivative. It's only a function of Q. And you know how to solve this equation. Because now this is just an ordinary uh, differential equation, and therefore om w uh, should be well. You 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 have to do the integral two m alpha. This uh, so you take two m on the other side, right? Then you see you have a square, so you take the square and then you integrate the q 
what, uh, what you have here. So 1 minus m omega square q square divided by 2 alpha, where this alpha is the energy. So this is the solution. This is the solution <coughs> of Hamilton, uh, of the Hamilton-Jacobi uh, equation for the case of the harmonical oscillator. Of course, uh, in this case, it's simple, but it was simple even before, right? So we haven't gained that much. But uh, well, we gained some insight uh, in this uh, equation. Actually, you don't even need uh, 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 you don't even need uh, to really do this integral. I mean, you can do it, but uh, you are not going to gain much because you understand that uh, all you need is uh, uh, ds dq and ds uh, 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 dt, right, to find the, the solution. So actually, you don't need uh, this, but you need the derivatives of this of this term. So for instance, uh, because this is P, right? P is the S dQ. So what is the S dQ? Uh, S is this. So the S dQ is exactly equal to dW dQ. So I have to take the derivative of this. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, just, uh, uh, so you do the, you see, you have the integral, and you take the derivative, so in a way it's just, uh, uh, this is uh, what you have here. You, you can bring back this, I think it's 2m alpha, uh, so here minus m square omega square q square, right? Here you had the, the, the integral, but now you are taking a derivative. So in a way, you know, the, the, the derivative is the inverse of the integral in a way, in a peculiar way. Uh, and so you, the, 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 you, you just get the function. And uh, yes. And how about the, uh, the other one? Uh, uh, is, uh, yeah, uh, so th this uh, is... Uh, uh, it's alpha, right? So it's the uh, is the the this constant, and uh, then uh, you should take the derivative here. So le le let's uh, let's write it uh, this way. So what you ha what you want here is. Uh, is beta equal, uh, you want the derivative with respect to the energy of this, right? Uh, so we have to take the derivative of, uh, so we get first t, uh, uh, minus t actually, right, minus t, um, plus uh, I take the derivative with respect to alpha of this thing here, so you get uh, some, uh, let me write the, the result. So this goes downstairs because you have a square root, uh, 1 minus m omega square q square uh, 2 alpha. So in other words, uh, and you recognize this. You see, now this it's an integral that uh, either you recognize or you find in that book. I told you several times, uh, but uh, it's just, uh, uh, do you recognize this integral? Is the, the integral 1 minus x, square root of 1 minus x square, dx is the r sine of x, right? So minus t, uh, 1 over omega, arc, arc sine, of, of this uh, argument here. So m omega square 2 alpha. Then you have q square, so it goes outside the square root. Okay, the integral of dx, 
divide by square root of 1 minus x square is the r cosine or the cosine depending on so in other words you see you can take the t on the other side and then take the sine of both side side this tells you that q is 2 alpha alpha is the energy <coughs> okay sorry omega square uh, sine of uh, omega t uh, plus uh, uh, beta or beta prime is just a constant so you can multiply by <coughs> so you see indeed this is the result that we knew that uh, the, the Q for the harmonic oscillator is just a, a trigonometric function is just a trigonometric function and then uh, you can take it and plug it back here and you get P, right? It's just MQ dot. If you take this and plug it in here, you get the common factor. So 1 minus sine square becomes the cosine, and this is just a Q dot. So actually, you rederive what you already knew, that the momentum is just uh, the mass times the... Uh, the velocity, but that uh, you is what you always get from the uh, one of the Hamilton uh, uh, equations. So uh, I guess the only things that you need to do at this stage is then uh, relate the uh, uh, this constant alpha and beta that you well alpha you already know that is the energy, and what is beta. Uh, uh, how are they related to the initial conditions? So that's an exercise that you can that you can do. In fact, I leave it as an exercise to convince yourself that uh, uh, two m alpha is equal to the initial. So P naught is the initial momentum plus omega square m square the initial uh, the initial position square, but this is kind of obvious because we said alpha is the energy, so it's the Hamiltonian. So and in fact, this is exactly if you divide by two m, this is the Hamiltonian at the initial time, right? Because it's P square divided by two m, uh, right? If you put here, this is always true, at the time t equal to 0, this is p dot q naught. And so, and beta, uh, tangent of beta is uh, m omega q naught p naught. So you can just, uh, by playing around with the solution, then you can see that this beta that we introduce as a constant uh, integration constant uh, is related to the initial uh, uh, position and momentum by this uh, by this uh, this relation. Okay. So unfortunately, we don't have real time to uh, go in more details about the Hamilton-Jacobi equations, but uh, maybe uh, well, I wanted to. So you see that in this case, when uh, you can uh, separate your equation in this form, actually the W, that is the generating function, or Hamilton characteristic function, you see that is exactly the generating function that brings your, uh, 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 your Hamiltonian uh, in a form uh, in which all coordinates are, are cyclic. Okay? So this, you remember, was the the way we discover this transformation for the harmonic oscillator. So this was the first step. 
that uh, I know uh, I can solve my Hamilton equations in a very simple manner if all my coordinates are cyclic, because in that case, the equations, equations of motion are uh, trivial, right? This is exactly the case when I can do this separation of variables, that is, when the energy is conserved. Then my Hamilton-Jacobi equation is exactly the canonical transformation that, that brings my system in the form in which all coordinates are cyclic, okay? If I cannot do that, that's the more general transformation. It's just the, the, the generating function that brings my system to the initial conditions. Again, I have very simple equations. Remember, it's just p dot equal to zero, bq dot equal to zero, and again, I can just uh, integrate those in a very simple manner. However, I have to solve the equation, so very often uh, this is not, uh, is not uh, very simple. But uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, this, this approach, uh, it's, uh, it's nice, uh, not so much, well, uh, maybe next time I'll try to, uh, I mean, it has some applications that are very powerful, uh, in particular uh, for a study of the motion of, uh, of uh, uh, planetary motion. Uh, because uh, you can introduce a, a set of variables in such a way that it's very easy to compute the period of motion of your system, okay, uh, without having apparently to solve the problem in all the details. So that was used very much when people uh, study uh, the, the planetary motions, that of course is one of the celestial mechanics was called. Uh, is one of the major main uh, application of classical mechanics. So may, uh, I'll see uh, maybe the, the first half of next lecture uh, we do that, and then uh, we solve together some other problems. Uh, but uh, uh, um, uh, so for that, uh, this approach uh, is rather powerful. But I, I hope at least it gives you a, a different handle, point of view of the same mechanical problem. And notice that this. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, it leads in a very natural way toward quantum mechanics. Just, just think of the fact that the P are D S of the uh, right. Uh, this is is a very small step to to go to Schrodinger equation. Like that is, after all, it's in the form of a Hamilton-Jacobi equation in a way. So uh, it's a framework within which uh, it's uh, it's nice and easy to to discuss. Uh, many problems, okay?